You've been training for a long time for this mission, about two years now, and you've passed your final exams, and it's just about time to go. So do you feel like it was what you expected? Do you feel like you're ready for the trip and, and ready for the mission? Yeah, I think we actually get a great sense of the training program and how the training flow is going to proceed when we start. And uh, it's really been exciting for me to see in these final phases of flight how the crew has come together, uh, how everything's come together with the ground, and uh, that the fact that folks are really ready for the flight and everything's getting integrated and put together really well, that's been just a, a pleasure to see. I know that uh, with your background in science, your scientist here on Earth before you even became an astronaut, um, you were really looking forward to getting your hands on the science equipment on board the space station. Can you tell us a little bit about what you are most excited about, what experiments you're going to be performing and you're looking forward to? Yeah, I'm incredibly excited about uh, a lot of the biology experiments, of course, that we're going to be doing on space station. So uh, I think some of the most interesting pieces of equipment that we've got on board for research capabilities are some of the ones that we're going to be doing for the first time on, on our mission, which is trying to sequence DNA in low Earth orbit. Uh, it's going to be very interesting and exciting. Uh, it gives us a great capability for space station going forward, both for studying diseases on the planet as well as our future exploration for Mars uh, beyond low Earth orbit. Also, there's a phenomenal research suite on board to actually study uh, cellular uh, material. So we're going to be bringing up a couple of different kinds of cells. We're going to be bringing up heart cells and looking at how uh, heart tissue organizes itself and how that behaves without gravity as a presence. And we're also going to be looking at bone cells. So what happens to the kinds of bone cells that are responsible for bone regeneration when they no longer have that gravity stimulus. And for those experiments and just in general, what, what would you say as a scientist is the value of the lab on the space station, a lab in, in microgravity? That's a really good question because uh, the space station is this enormous engineering achievement and we've seen the international partner agencies come together to build this incredible space station. Uh, but one of the most exciting things to me is the, actually the science that we can do that we can utilize the space station for. And the unique thing about the space station is that we are in this, this low Earth orbit environment. So we don't have gravity. We really have this presence of microgravity. It's very, very small amounts of gravity. We're in free fall around the planet. And so on Earth, anytime you do an experiment, you always have that gravitational force. And that's never anything that you can vary in your experimental conditions. What we have on the space station is the ability to vary how much gravitational force we're putting into the cells or the tissues, or even sometimes the human body is the experiment. Uh, so another thing that's really unique about the space station is the environment that it's in. It's traveling at 17,500 miles an hour. It's in a slightly different place in the magnetic field. It's in a different place in the atmosphere than when we have uh, an experimental station on the ground. So we can see things like uh, heavy particle radiation, ionizing radiation, in a slightly different way. We can take a look at, for example, the search for dark matter in the universe with the alpha magnetic spectrometer in a slightly different way than we could using Earth-based laboratories. And you just mentioned that sometimes the human body is experiment, and in this case, that's you. So has it been interesting or different to, to kind of turn the tables and be the experiment yourself in some cases? Yeah, it is kind of funny sometimes to be the experiment and the experimenter. Um, so all of the research that we do, of course, is, is subject to human studies regulation and done through informed consent. But we do have the opportunity in a lot of cases to be the experiment. So I think that's really fascinating for me, actually, is to see the response of the human body physiologically to microgravity. So we know things like the immune system changes. Uh, there's some dysregulation of the immune system. When you're in microgravity, you no longer have fluid drawn to your feet the whole time. So there's changes in where the fluid shifts around in your body and fluid compartmentalization. Uh, we certainly know that there's cardiovascular changes. There's changes uh, with your heart and the way you pump blood in your body. Uh, we know that there's skin changes on board. We do know that there's changes in the levels of dormant viruses that will reactivate as well as the microbial ecosystem that surrounds us. So pretty much any system you can think of, there's some really interesting observation that we can make in low Earth orbit that we can't study on the ground.
Okay, clearly there's a lot to be excited about as a scientist, but now shifting gears a little bit to as an astronaut, what are you looking forward to? The, the ride on the rocket, the possibility of a spacewalk, and, and just looking out the window? Yeah, I think the moment that I'm most looking forward to uh, is that first moment when we open the hatch on the space station and we get to float in and we get to, to look out the cupola. I think your first glimpse of the planet from the space station is a pretty incredible moment. Uh, I think, you know, really all of the above. The ride on the rocket's going to be uh, amazing, probably fairly indescribable. And uh, the, the opportunities that we have to actually install some hardware in the space station are really interesting on our mission. So we're hoping to install the international docking adapter to the front of space station. This is going to allow us to do commercial crew flights to the station uh, with our U.S.-based partners, uh, as well as the upgrading of space station to have lithium-ion battery capability. This is really going to allow our energy storage to go well into uh, 2020 and beyond to maintain space station as this incredible laboratory. Well, it sounds like there's a lot going on in your mission. Anything else in particular that you can tell people to be watching out for? Yeah, so um, I'm hoping to share some of these experiences uh, through the NASA astronauts account. Uh, we'll see if my photography skills are up to par with those of uh, Scott Kelly and Jeff Williams. They have set a pretty high bar. So we'll do our best uh, as Expedition 48 crew to share a little bit of this journey with you, both the research that we're doing as well as the views that we're seeing outside. We can't wait to see them. Thanks so much. Have a great uh, trip into space and a good mission. Thanks. Thank you.